Welcome to EPG Partshala. Today we are going to discuss the module Emmanuel Levinas Ethics as First Philosophy. This module is written by William Edelglass from Marlborough College. I am Raghuram Raju from University of Hyderabad. This module has something unique. It is unique because Levinas is not giving us a package of ethical norms. He's not telling us what ethics should be and what ethics should not be. Levinas is embarking on a huge task of highlighting pointing out how the entire Western philosophy has converged on certain common aspects that had serious implications to the control of ethics. That's the important contribution of Levinas. Now, what is this convergence that Levinas is talking about. The convergence is entire Western philosophy, according to Levinas, is trying or has been trying to totalize the problem of the self and the other. The totalization, Levinas points out, is to the disappearance or elimination or subsuming of the other within the matrix of the self. This is the larger convergence which he finds comes a long way in shaping the nature of ethics. So, in other words, in the relation between self and the other, Western philosophy centralized itself, totalized the self, and this totalizing consists of subsuming the other to the point of eliminating it. This is the crux of Levinas' stand. Now he says that as opposed to the totalizing project that underlies Western philosophical thinking, he proposes an alternative, which is what he calls as a welcoming approach to the other that is a moral consciousness. So this welcoming approach to the other that involves moral consciousness is an opening to the vulnerability of the embodied other and signifies what Levinas terms as the face. The face is the crucial term in Levinas' understanding. According to Levinas, the face is so central, it in fact precedes language. Levinas says that the response to the other is what makes us to speak language. The upsurge of language is a result of the self's response to the other and it is this upsurge of language that becomes what is called as a discourse. So what precedes and what is primary for Levinas is the other and not the self. And it is the other or dealing with the other, responding to the other that leads to the upsurge of language and that becomes the discourse. So for Levinas, ethics is the first philosophy and it is the condition for all other areas of discourse. So the response to the other can be confronting the evil, choosing the good and exploring and describing these encounters are at the heart of Levinas' philosophy. So Levinas' critic of the 
Western philosophy is, as I pointed out, is a, around the violence of totalizing thought. Levinas is a direct student of Edmund Husserl and Martin Heidegger. And in Husserl's conception of intentionality, Levinas sees that the entire intentionality is about how consciousness is related to its object. In other words, the consciousness again or intentionality is subject specific. So like Heidegger, Levinas also saw in Husserlian's project that everything becomes the object for consciousness. So this aspect of Husserl is an instance of totalizing where there is no meaning in Husserl outside consciousness. That's the very, very important problem that Levinas finds in Husserl. Similarly, he finds in Heidegger that there is no meaning which is outside or alien to Dasein. The Dasein is discovered only in the context of the, the Dasein or the Dasein, the other Daseins are discovered in the analysis of the self. So both Heidegger and Husserl, despite being very, very radical, have converged on this larger thematic, which is totalizing the other and subsuming the other within the matrix of the self. So as I pointed out just now, that from the beginning, Western philosophy ultimately absorbs the other into the same. So let me quote this passage from Levinas. Levinas says, I quote, Western philosophy coincides with the disclosure of the other, where the other manifesting itself as a being loses its alterity. From its infancy, philosophy has been struck with the horror of the other that remains other with an insurmountable allergy, unquote. So there is no other that is made to remain as the other. The relationship between the self and the other is eventually used as making the other part of the self, where other is appropriated, where other is brought under this totalizing thing of making the self the same. same. So there are some minor exceptions, like in Plato and Descartes, the dominant tendency for Levinas remains and is wedded to the totalizing project. So there are serious moral implications that fall out of this totalizing thing. So as I pointed out right in the beginning, what is important in Levinas is he is not giving us an ethical package. He's not telling us what is wrong with the ethics of others. He's saying, he's digging, he's in fact excavating the foundational philosophical convergence in Western philosophy that has serious implications to ethics. So having laid bare the totalizing as the convergence point, now let us look at what are the ethical implications of this totalizing project that is the pervasive aspects of Western philosophy. The, the, the ethical implication of it is the other is stripped of ethical inviolability. It makes colonialism possible. It makes slavery possible. So it makes, for instance, the Hiroshima bombing possible. It makes Stalin's gulags possible. It makes Nazism possible. It makes genocide possible. So the point that can be seen in Levinas is all these aberrations, all these evils are not, according to Levinas, the causes that you find or the phenomena. They are, in fact, the effects of a larger cause, the larger cause is the totalizing project that involves violence against the other. Uh, Levinas talks about two forms of other. The other, the atre, that is 
any object of consciousness. The other one is absolute other or true, which is beyond the constituting power of the subject. So other can be seen as, in some cases, an alter ego. That is, the other is similar to me, the sameness that he talks about. The other can be beyond the self, beyond an alter ego. Okay, in contrast, Levinas proposes that I am dependent on the other. That in contrast to other is subsumed under me. He talks about how I am dependent on the other for my nourishment. Okay, the other is the one who gives me satisfaction, who also frustrates me. The other cannot be synthesized by the I at all. The other will remain outside me. I can never get everything of the other inside me. In other words, this I cannot reduce the other. The other for Levinas is beyond intentionality. It escapes the contextual horizons. So it's something that eludes appropriation. The face-to-face -face situation is beyond representation. The other cannot be represented. I mean, this is one of the important aspects that comes out in post-colonial discussion. It is, as I said, it is beyond intentionality. It is exterior to consciousness. Now, the instances that he gives of this other as outside the self or death, time, shame, nudity, insomnia, and other limited states, all these things are beyond the grasp of the consciousness. Now, if you take, for instance, the idea of death, and also one can add here, birth. Death and birth are not the are not amenable for, are not given to first person experience. We know about our death through others, okay? But we will not have experience of our own death. We also are, cannot have the experience of our own birth. So there are a lot of things that remain outside and this is very important. This provides the fulcrum for his ethics. So the face of the other, the face that he talks about is not mere a physical face. It is an aesthetic image which is irreducible. It is not just a phenomenon, it is an enigma. An enigma that allows, that doesn't allow uh, to be appropriated. The face is neither seen nor touched. The face appears in very vulnerable positions and it many times is defenseless of the other body. It is susceptible to pain and hunger, thirst, heat and cold, exhaustion and exposure to murder. All these things are attached to the other. The other, the face of the other is not cognitive procedure, that I don't confront the other cognitively. It is a welcoming approach, as I mentioned right in the beginning. It is not amenable for representation. It does not you know, be captured through universal principles. So the, the vulnerability of the other disrupts my world. See, the moment I confront the other, I get, you know, disrupted. It disrupts my, my complacency about myself. It di disorients myself, okay? The other merely does not negate me, as in the case of Hegelian, you know, analysis of how the other can negate me. No, the encounter of the with the other the encounter with the other makes me makes myself to reveal itself to me okay it is this encounter with the other by myself that ruptures totalization that disrupts the possibility of totalization so for him that keeping the other as autonomous as outside the meaning domain of self is very crucial to stop totalizing. So there is a causal relation between accepting the other as irreducible and it is that which can stop us from totalizing. But having said this, other is not something which is romantic or you know idealistic. Other is vulnerable. It is open for obligation. 
but this obligation that I have towards the other or the other generates in me is an ethical command. It arises not in me, but in the other. So the other is more important in uh, Levinas than myself. And Levinas argues that this aspect, this primacy of the other has not been factored. In fact, it has been you know, run down by the entire Western philosophical system. And that has serious ethical implications, disastrous with ethical implications that are pointed out by Levinas. Let us identify four important points that follow from what Levinas has been arguing. One is that there is ethics is asymmetrical. And then other is inescapable. Defenseless face of the other contest my autonomy to pursue my own needs. So there is something that is, that is not possible. So the other, the relation with other is not reciprocal. That's why he calls it asymmetrical. It is not based on exchange. So he knocks down the entire the economic activity or philosophy of the modern capitalism. So largely, he says that when I deal with the other, the relation is not symmetrical. It is not two-way. It is asymmetrical. And that is the very important point that comes from Levinas. The second important point that comes across in Levinas' writings is ethics is anti-foundational. Ethics is not grounded in rationality merely. It is precognitive. That's the important thing. Ethics is not about giving justification for ethical norms. It is description of responsibility that we already have. have. The choice is comes later. Okay, what is important is that it is just describes what are our responsibility to the other, and the other is irreducible, as I already pointed out. The third important point that comes out in his writings is that there is a tremendous amount of influence of Jewish and Christian thought on him. He freely uses words like transcendence, the other, infinity, God, good, beyond. Most of them have a theological roots. So that's the third point that we find in his writings. The fourth one is the important one, is that ethics is the first philosophy. Ethics is prior to and conditions all other discourses. For him, ethics is the first philosophy. Unlike you know, metaphysics for Aristotle, epistemology for Descartes, ontology for Heidegger. For Levinas, the first philosophy is not metaphysics, is not epistemology, is not ontology. It is ethics. Ethics is pre-linguistic, pre-historical, pre, pre, pre you know, it, it, and, and it, it is prior to cultural meaning. Face-to-face -face relationship discloses responsibility that is prior to freedom, judgment, and moral reasoning. Okay, now let us just look at the impact of Levinas on others. One of the major influences of Levinas is on post-colonial post -colonial discourse. Also, those who talked about animal ethics, environmental philosophy. So there's an enormous impact Levinas comes to uh, uh, have on these disciplines. Now, having identified some important aspects in Levinas, and also briefly mentioned some of the uh, influences Levinas had on others, let us look at some criticisms on Levinas. The first criticism on Levinas that is very important is that it is unattainable moral perfectionism. That he says something which is unwieldy. He says something that is that may be true but unwieldy that makes us feel guilty. That yes, we have to be like this, but we can't be. So that forces guilt in us. The second criticism on him is that Levinas, in opening up the importance of the other and how 
the self is dependent on the other, how other is outside my meaning domain or my outside the domain of my intentionality does not bother to identify the what is the capacity of an ethical subjects what is the psychological health that is required in dealing with the other he thinks that everybody is endowed with capacity to deal with the other that may not be true that's the other criticism on him the third criticism that is leveled against him is that there is no openness to the other that is not guided by self-interest. Okay, sometimes I do look at the other with self-interest and you must factor and he does not accept that possibility. The next criticism on Levinas is that he is too naive and he is misguided because he says lot of things which are unwieldy. The next one is that his ethics is largely guided by religious thinking and not philosophically you know, tenable. Okay. And many people came back to criticize its ethics as asymmetrical, saying that how do you understand that ethics as asymmetrical? Does it not lead to chaos? It also can lead to opportunism, that the other uses you okay and does not do anything to you okay if it goes on like that i mean you have a situation where the asymmetry can lead to exploitation now the most important point and i think it has some meat in it is that he accepts suffering without struggle and he accepts oppressive structures and deals with them at a factual level he does not actually combat them that if the self has outraged the other. The other should react against the self. Okay, he doesn't have facility like this. He assumes that the self has to look all the time at the other. And then if you don't, there are bad consequences. There is no possibility where the self that tries to outrage the other, in that case, the other can hit back. That provision is not there in Levinas. But after looking at what Levinas says and after looking at what critics have pointed out, what is important is to realize that Levinas' project of ethics is not piecemeal. It is a whole project of completely discounting what was practiced in Western philosophy. Okay. Now, most of the criticisms that or leveled against him, try to take issues from that which is which he is rejecting and then try to highlight the limitations in him. Now, that can be done, but what is important to see is that Levinas is not offering a piecemeal ethical package. He is not giving you a mere ethical package. He is trying to lay bare the civilizational trajectories that led to the kind of ethics that has been practiced in Western philosophy. And this has to be factored. This civilizational take of Levinas has to be factored in critically assessing his writings and his contribution. Thank you.